night, guys. So I've been a little all over the place here lately. Um, I already dropped the next uh, preset topic, so uh, check that shit out if you haven't already. Don't know how it's going to go, but it's something that I think is important, so yeah. Um, still haven't got my damn CPAP machine, so sleep still all, all the fuck, and uh, yeah, still got to get that dealt with. Um, I keep saying that, yeah, got an appointment coming up, about to get the last four teeth pulled, but um, each time that's what I think, and then I go there and it's something else. Like the first time I thought it was going to get pulled like right then, but it was actually x-rays, and then like setting up a plan for it. Uh, so yeah, that didn't work out, and then I was like, for sure, the next appointment is gonna be getting that shit dealt with, but no, it was fitting for, like, fucking dentures, like some weird-ass pink shit in your mouth, and, yeah, it's like fucking Play-Doh or some shit, and then it hardens, but anyway, so I think the next one, which is Friday, will be the actual pulling, which means I'm gonna have... Uh, one of them's kind of a pain, and it's a uh, root canal, so it's probably going to require more healing than normal. So it really depends on how things go, but I'm guessing that this weekend I'm not going to be able to really uh, talk properly. <laughs> so probably not going to be happening like right now. It really depends on how things go, though. But, um... Yeah, I figured what I could do is give some very basic background shit. I know a lot of people are lazy and they're not going to go do research. Not everybody's like me. And hell, lately I haven't even been able to do much research on anything. Some people are just busy. So I'm going to go over some very basic shit. Basically just the satanic verses and the fatwa involved with Salman Rushdie, who is the topic of... Uh, our next preset discussion live stream. The publication of the Satanic Verses by Viking Penguin in September 1988 caused immediate controversy in the Islamic world because of what was seen by some to be an irreverent depiction of Muhammad. The title refers to a disputed Muslim tradition that is referenced in the book. According to this tradition, Muhammad, Mahound in the book added verses, ayah, to the Quran, accepting three Arabian pagan goddesses who were worshipped in Mecca as divine beings. According to the legend, Muhammad later revoked the verses, saying the devil tempted him to utter these lines to appease the Meccans, hence the, quote, satanic verses. However, the narrator reveals to the reader that these disputed verses were actually from the mouth of the archangel Gabriel. The book was banned in many countries with large Muslim communities, 13 in total, Iran, India, Bangladesh, Sudan, South America, Sri Lanka, Kenya, Thailand, Ten Tanzania, Indonesia, Singapore, Venezuela, Venezuela, and Pakistan, or Pakistan, I'm not sure. In response to the protests on 22nd January 1989, <clears throat> Rushdie published a column in The Observer that called Muhammad one of the great geniuses of world history but noted that Islamic doctrine holds Muhammad to be human and in no way perfect. He held that the novel is not, quote, an anti-religious novel. It is, however, an attempt to write about migration, its stresses, and transformations, end quote. On 14th of February 1989, Valentine's Day, and also the day of his close friend Bruce Chatwin's funeral, a fatwa ordering Rushdie's execution was proclaimed on Radio Tehran by Ayatollah Khomeini the supreme leader of Iran at the time, calling the book, quote, blasphemous against Islam, end quote. Chapter 4 of the book depicts the character of an imam in exile who returns to incite revolt from the people of his country with no regard for their safety. According to Khomeini's son, his father never read the book. A bounty was offered for Rushdie's death, and he was thus forced to live under police protection for several years. On the 7th of March, 1989, the United Kingdom and Iran broke diplomatic relations over the Rushdie controversy. When, on BBC Radio 4, he was asked for a response to the threat, Rushdie said, Frankly, I wish I had written a more critical book. And, quote, I'm very sad that it should have happened. 
It's not true that the book is blasphemy against Islam. I doubt very much that Khomeini or anyone else in Iran has read the book or more than selected extracts out of context. End quote. Later he wrote that he was proud then and always of that statement. While he did not feel his book was especially critical of Islam, a religion whose leaders behaved in this way could probably use a little criticism. The publication of the book and the fatwa sparked violence around the world with bookstores firebombed. Muslim communities in several nations in the West held public rallies burning copies of the book. Several people associated with translating or publishing the book were attacked, seriously injured, and even killed. Many more people died in riots in some countries. Despite the danger posed by the fatwa, Rushdie made a public appearance at London's Wembley Stadium on 11th of August 1993 during a concert by U2. In 2010, U2 bassist Adam Clayton recalled that lead vocalist Bono had been calling Salman Rushdie from the stage every night on the Zoo TV tour. When we played Wembley, Salman showed up in person and the stadium erupted. You couldn't tell from the drummer Larry Mullen Jr.'s face that we weren't expecting it. Salman was a regular visitor after that. He had a backstage pass, and he used it as often as possible. For a man who was supposed to be in hiding, it was remarkably easy to see him around the place. On 24th September 1998, as a precondition to the restoration of diplomatic relations with the UK, the Iranian government, then headed by Mohammad Khatami, gave a public commitment that it would, quote, neither support nor hinder assassination operations on Rushdie, end quote. Hardliners in Iran have continued to reaffirm, reaffirm the death sentence. In early 2005, Khomeini's fatwa was reaffirmed by Iran's current leader, Ayatollah Ali Khomeini, in a message to Muslim pilgrims making the annual pilgrims to Mecca, pilgrimage to Mecca. Additionally, the Revolutionary Guards declared that the death sentence on him is still valid. Rusty has reported that he still receives a, quote, sort of Valentine's card, end quote, from Iran each year on 14th of February, letting him know the country has not forgotten the vow to kill him and has jokingly referred to it as my unfunny Valentine. He said it's reached the point where it's a piece of rhetoric than a real th rather than a real threat. Despite the threats on Rusty personally, he said that his family has never been threatened, and that his mother, who lived in Pakistan during the later years of her life, even received outpourings of support. Rushdie himself has been prevented from entering Pakistan, however. A former bodyguard to Rushdie, Ron Evans, planned to publish a book recounting the behavior of the author during the time he was in hiding. Evans said Rushdie tried to profit financially from the fatwa and was suicidal, but Rushdie dismissed dismissed the book as a bunch of lies and took legal action against Evans, his co-author, and their publisher. On 26 August 2008, Rushdie received an apology at the High Court in London from all three parties. A memoir of his years of hiding, Joseph Anton, was released on 18th of September 2012. Joseph Anton was Rushdie's secret alias during the height of, his, of the controversy. In February 1997, Ayatollah Hassan Saneh, leader of the Banyad Hensda A. Kordad, 15th of Kordad Foundation, reported that the blood money offered by the Foundation for the assassination of Rushdie would be increased from $2 million to $2.5 million. Then a semi-official religious foundation in Iran increased the reward it had offered for the killing of Rushdie from $2.8 million to $3.3 million. In November 2015, former Indian minister P. Chidambaram acknowledged that banning the satanic verses was wrong. In 1998, Iran's former president, Mohammad Khatami, proclaimed the fatwa finished. But it has never been officially lifted and, in fact, has been reiterated several times by Ali Khamenei and other religious officials. Yet more money was added the bounty, to the bounty in February 2016. Failed assassination attempt in 1989. On the 3rd of August 1989, while Mustafa Mohab Mazay was priming a book bomb loaded with RDX explosives in a hotel in Paddington, central London, London the, bomb, the bomb exploded prematurely, destroying two floors of the hotel and killing Mazay. A previously unknown Lebanese group, the Organization of the Muhadin of Islam, said he died preparing an attack on the apostate Rushdie. There is a shrine in Tehran's behetzt a Zahra Cemetery for Mustafa Mohab Mazay that says he was martyred in London, 3rd August 1989, the first martyr to die on a mission to kill Salman Rushdie. 
Mazah's mother was invited to relocate to Iran in the Islamic World Movement of Martyrs commemoration, built his shrine in the cemetery that holds thousands of Iranian soldiers slain in the Iraq-Iran War. Mm -hmm. There's so much shit, I really wanted to get to the kind of the very end point here, the big one. Oh, here it is. On the 12th of August, 2022, while about to start a lecture at the Chautauqua Institution in Chautauqua, New York, Rushdie was attacked by Hadi Matar, a 24-year-old Lebanese-American who rushed onto the stage and stabbed him repeatedly, including in the neck and abdomen. The attacker was pulled away before being taken into custody by a state trooper. Rushdie was airlifted to UPMC Hamat, a tertiary trauma center in Erie, Pennsylvania, where he underwent surgery before being put on a ventilator. Security measures at UPMC Hamad were increased due to the potential threat of further attempts on his life. This included 24-hour protection with a security officer outside his room and searches being performed upon entry into the hospital. The suspect was identified as 24-year-old Hadi Matar of Fairview, New Jersey. Later in the day, Rushdie's agent, Andrew Wiley, confirmed that Rushdie had received stab injuries to the liver and hand, and that he might lose an eye. A day later, Rushdie was taken off the ventilator and was able to speak. On the 23rd of October 2022, Wiley reported that Rushdie had lost sight in one eye and the use of one hand, but survived the murder attempt. Rushdie's memoir about the attack, Knife, colon, Meditations After an Attempted Murder, is scheduled for publication in April 2024, coming up. So yeah, that's the the bare bones of it. I kind of glossed over a little bit in the middle there, but gives you a little bit of an idea of what we're going to be talking about. And again, this isn't like pertaining to like particularly attacking Islam or anything like that. It's about free speech and its limitations in general. So it will likely branch out into that topic, depending on who shows up and how it goes. So, yeah, a little bit of context there. Thank you for your time.